where the state of war is only intensifying by the day specifically in and around the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. Now, the Wagner mercenary group of Russia and the Russian army claim to have fully captured Bakhmut with Russian President Vladimir Putin even congratulating the army on claims of this conquest. While the head of Russia's Wagner mercenary group has insisted that his fighters had taken control of the eastern city, the Ukrainian president, President Volodymyr Zelensky, has said that Bakhmut was not occupied by Moscow as yet, with Kyiv still maintaining that it holds on to surrounding areas of the small industrial town. Now, Bakhmut, a, a salt mining town that once had a population of 70,000 people, has been the scene of some of the bloodiest fighting in Moscow's 15-month offensive in Ukraine. The loss of Bakhmut would be hugely symbolic for the Ukrainians. Nonetheless, the experts maintain that it will not mean any sort of strategic victory. And it should be also maintained that Russia, who had held, has in fact been on with its offensive on Bakhmut for months. In fact, this year in July, it will complete a year of offensive only on Bakhmut. It may be noted that the fall of the city would come before a major counter-offensive that Kiev has been preparing for months. Experts even claim that perhaps that counter-offensive has already begun. Let's try and get in a sense of perspective in terms of where the truth lies in this war. And for that, let me bring in Ludmila Buemista, who is a Ukrainian MP and joining me live right now. Many thanks to you, Ludmila, for joining in. Now, why is control over Bakhmut becoming so significant for Putin, considering it's just a small town? Many call it obscure. What explains the conflicting accounts behind this battle? We all need to understand that uh, the initial plans of Russia uh, on, in the Ukrainian invasion failed miserably. And right now, Kremlin is looking for any uh, opportunity to present their uh, victories as insignificant or fake as uh, it may sound. Uh, Bakhmut is one of those examples of uh, a pure informational campaign that doesn't have anything to do with any military uh, situation or uh, military victory. We need to all understand that uh, once flourishing and pros prosperous town, Yes, it was not big, but flowers everywhere and uh, big industries around it was completely ruined to the ground by Russian invaders. It was burned uh, to uh, mere ground and now it's nothing but uh, rocks and a topographic point on the map from the military perspective. What Russians failed to understand until now is that for Ukrainians, Bakhmut is always going to remain in our hearts and it is always going to remain uh, another demonstration and proof of Russian war crimes in Ukraine. So now Russia can say what they want to their population, that they're limiting access to any alternative inf information, but there is no victory there. Okay. 100,000 Russian soldiers. Right irreparably damaged, destroyed in Bakhmut. That is a wound that will never heal also on the Russian soul. Absolutely. I'm sure there have been loss of lives on both ends of the spectrum, whether it's Ukraine or Russia. Having said that, when we talk about military gains for Russia, could Bakhmut act as a springboard for liberation of other bigger cities in Donetsk, which could also determine Russian control of the larger region of Donetsk? There is no strategic significance of the city of Bakhmut whatsoever. It doesn't open any opportunities for further attacks. Moreover, if you look at the most recent published maps by the Ukrainian military, uh, our armed forces managed to push Russia from the flanks. So now all the strategic roads are under full control of the Ukrainian military. So from that perspective, we are absolutely confident that there will be no advantage for the Russian army. Right. And let's also talk about what your Western allies have to say. The U.S. Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin and even NATO alliance head Jens Stoltenberg have played down potential fall of the city. They said that it's just a symbolic battle. 
as have even Western military experts. Why are they calling it a symbolic battle? Well, I think Putin just wants to show some victories uh, to their own his own population and it's important for him to show that he is not completely losing this war although we see it as a fact that it already happened it's just a, a process that is going to continue Ru ukrainian army with the help of the all the military aid from the allies will be pushing russian forces further and further from the ukrainian land so now uh, i think russian propaganda is just catching any opportunity uh, to parade their fake victories or fake successes. All right. It's interesting you talk about Russian propaganda. Is Moscow now looking to shape Bakhmut into a propaganda victory, considering Putin has faced a string of defeats after months of intense fighting? Of course, they will try, but their propaganda position is very weak because it is a lie. And uh, everyone understands uh, who follows the situation in Ukraine that Bakhmut for us is our land, it's our country. And this is what we are fighting for. We are fighting for our homes. And Putin thinks that he can crash our will by crashing our cities. But that is not going to be the case. He couldn't crash our will when he... Uh, completely ruined uh, Mariupol. He couldn't crash our will after the war crimes of Bucha and Derpin. And Bakhmut will be no different. It only unites the Ukrainian nation and makes us stronger. Not even the attacks on the civil infrastructure and energy infrastructure that left regions of Ukraine without electricity could crush the will for us to fight this war and to win this war. So, Ludmila, the last question to you. Let's also talk about this confusion over Ukraine's counter-offensive, which has been in the making for months now. Is the silence over this counter-offensive a deliberate tactic? Well, of course, you cannot uh, imagine that in our very technolo technology advanced society, there will be any details of military operations that are being planned. Uh, that's normal. Uh, our strategy, our successful strategy was always to take our enemy by surprise. So I think we will see more surprises. All right, Ludmila, I think we'll have to leave it at that. Many thanks to you for joining in on News 18 Global. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Stay safe.